everyone! So we are from Group 2 Class 2. We want to present how we make the terror review. So my name is Ananda Ruswardani. And my name is Lelia. My name is Rafi. And my name is Naila. So now let's check out how we make it. Hello everyone! So we are from Group 2, IE Class 2. Today we will explain how we made a terrarium. We made the terrarium in Lab 19, Industrial Engineering Lab, on Wednesday, July 9, 2025. A terrarium is a clear container, usually made of glass, where plants are grown in a small ecosystem. It can be either closed or open, creating a humid or dry environment for different kinds of plants. A terrarium is more than just a glass container filled with plants. It's like creating your very own miniature world of nature. Right on your table, imagine a tiny rainforest or desert that leaves and read behind a layer of a clear glass where each plant, every grain of soil, and even the droplets of water play a crucial role in sustaining life inside. How does a terrarium work? Inside a terrarium, you can witness the fascinating cycles of nature on a small scale. The plant's photosynthesis using sunlight, generating oxygen, water that you add gradually evaporate, condense on the glass, and then rains back down into the plants and soil, just like the water cycle in a real forest. Now we're talking about the function of terrarium itself. Terrarium serves as a beautiful decorative element that brings a touch of nature into any indoor space. Their compact size and artistic design make them perfect for enhancing home interiors, workspace, or even cafe, whether placed on a dell shelf or windows wheel. Terrariums can brighten up a room and create a calming and natural atmosphere. Beyond artistic, terrariums are also valuable for education and learning. They are offer a hands-on way to explore biological concepts such as ecosystem, plant life cycle, and water cycle. Students can observe how plants grow, how moisture recycles in closed ecosystem, and how light affect photosynthesis. Another practical benefit is the terrarium allow people to grow plants indoor. Even in small or sun-limited space, they are ideal for apartments or office, where the outdoors gardening is impossible with the right choice of plants like succulents, mosses, or ferns. Anyone can enjoy greenery without needing pay, need, need a big backyard. Lastly, terrariums are known for being low maintenance, especially in closed terrarium. Water is recycled through condensation, reducing the needs for frequent watering. This makes them perfect for busy individuals or beginners who want to enjoy the benefits of plant care without the hassles of traditional gardening. This is for the function of terrarium. Okay, next is typical of terrarium. There are six types of uh, terrarium. The first one is closed terrarium. The features is use a tightly sealed container like a glass jar with a lid. And the function is retains moisture and creates a mini water cycle. And the next one is open terrarium. The features is use an open container such as a glass bowl or pot without a lid. The function is ideal for plants that don't like high humidity. And then the next one is paludarium. The features a combination of land and water like a swamp or river ecosystem. This is typ typically contains land and aquatic plants, small fish or amphibians. And then next one is vivarium, commonly used to keep small animals like reptiles, insects, or amphibians. This is customized to animals need soils, rocks, artificial or real plants, UV lamps, etc. And then aqua terrarium, half water and half land, similar to a paludarium but with a more balanced ratio of land and water. And the last one is this desert terrarium, designed to resemble a desert ecosystem with sand, rocks, and arid plants. So this is for the specific explanation of the terrarium. The type of terrarium that we use is a closed terrarium. It was created to maintain a self-sustaining mini ecosystem. So the materials that we needed for making our terrarium, the first one is glass jar with a lid, and then the second one is small pebbles or gravel. This is for the bottom drainage layer, about like two until three centimeter, and then there is mesh or netting. This is like a fine plastic like uh, mesh or fabric to separate pebbles from the soil, and then there is activated charcoal. This help absorb excess moisture or preference odors. And the next one, there is a soil mix. Uh, there is potting soils, and then crushed charcoal and compost or organic fertilizer, and we mix it in into one. And then there is a moss to cover the soil and retain the most moisture. And there is a lot of grass seed. This is the main plant that will grow inside the terrarium. And then there is the optional plants such as like Catra Catranthus rosus to place in the center. And then colorless leaves to for decorative uh, accents. And uh, for the tools that we needed is the large plant tweezer. And then uh, there is a spray bottle to spray the plant. First, we prepare a clean and dry glass jar, and then add a 2 until 3 cm layer of small pebbles for drainage. And then place a piece of mesh or netting over the pebbles to separate them from the soil. 
Next, we sprinkle a thin layer of activated charcoal to absorb excess moisture and prevent odors. Now, we prepare the soil mixed by combining potting soil, crushed charcoal, and a little compost, about uh, 4 until 5 cm of this mixture, into the jar and level it out. And then place a thin layer of moss on top of to help retain moisture and add a natural look. And then gently uh, sprinkle of grass seeds on the soil surface. Uh, I also add the Catranthus roses in the center and arrange colossus leaves or moss around the decoration. Then lightly mix the contents with the water to moisten the environment uh, just enough to activate the seeds. And then close the jar tightly to seal the terrarium and create a self-sustaining system. Finally, place it in the direct sunlight, check for condensation. If there is too, too much, open the lid briefly and then reseal it again. So the lesson that we learn in here is the first one, there is the system thinking. A terrarium function as a small self-contained ecosystem just like a company or a production system. Each component such as like soil, water, air, and plant must work together efficiently to maintain balance and sustain life. This illustrates how interconnected elements must operate as a system to achieve overall performance. The second one is process blending. The creation of a terrarium involves organic steps including layering materials, selecting suitable plants, and maintaining the right environment. This step reflects the importance of process planning in industrial engineering, where structure procedure lead to consistent and reliable outcomes. And the third is resource efficiency. Since a terrarium has limited space and materials, all resources must be used efficiently with minimal waste. This concept aligns with lean manufacturing, where the goal is to minimize value while minimizing unnecessary use of time, material, and energy. And the fourth is sustainable awareness. A terrarium is a clear example of a self-sustaining system that relies on a natural cycle. This supports the growing emphasis on sustainable production method in industrial engineering design systems that are environmentally uh, friendly and reduce long-term environmental impact. And the fifth is monitoring and control. To keep a terrarium healthy, regularly monitoring and adjustment are necessary. For example, like checking the humidity, like light exposure, or a plant condition. This is similar to quality control and continuous improvement practice in an in industrial process where system must be observed, evaluate, and improve continuously. Okay, so a terrarium is a living art piece, a tiny jungle or desert you can design, nurture, and watch flourish, all while learning about the wonders of the natural world in the palm of your hand. It invites us all to bring a piece of nature indoors, appreciate life's delicate balance, and grow our curiosity alongside our Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye!